delegating effectively. To be effective leaders, we must delegate responsibilities to other qualified people. And that's the key word. If you delegate to unqualified people, you can make the problem worse. Now notice what Jethro said. Great wisdom. But you should select from all the people, able men. Can't be just anybody. They've got to be able. They've got to be God-fearing. They cannot be worshiping the idols of Egypt anymore. They've got to be worshiping the one true God. And that again indicates to me that Jethro had come to that point in his life. He's giving wisdom based upon his own experience. Able men, God-fearing, trustworthy. Why is that so key? Because here's this great line of people and all these people have needs. And what happens if somebody comes along and wants to give someone a piece of silver in order to get first in line or get a priority? In other words, a little payoff under the table. You think that could happen out there in that wilderness with these carnal people? Absolutely. Uh, they've got to be trustworthy, honest, and hating bribes. And that doesn't leave any question as to what the problem might be. Place them over the people as officials of thousands. I mean, we've got tons of people here. Over hundreds, fifties, and tens. And you can see why this has become a model even in the business community today. They should judge the people at all times. They need guidance. They need help. They need to be able to resolve these issues. They need a social structure. They need to understand how the laws work in their relationships with their neighbors, their friends, and their families. And then, Moses, this is great wisdom. Then, Moses, they can bring you every important case, the big cases, but judge every minor case themselves. They can take care of of these smaller issues which can become big issues but they can bring just the really key issues to you. And in this way you'll lighten your load. They will bear it with you and if you do this and God so directs you and I like that and again I think that indicates Jethro's sensitivity. He's coming with wisdom and his advice but he's saying Moses check it out with God don't just take it from me, and that's a good principle in itself. Check it out with God. And if God directs you, you'll be able to endure. And also all these people will be able to go home satisfied. In other words, you need to do something about this. And here's what I advise you to do. Establish your priorities, and then delegate to qualified people. Notice the correlation again back in Acts chapter 6 where the apostles were trying to resolve this problem with the widows. Therefore, brothers, select from among you seven men of what? Good reputation, full of the Spirit and wisdom, whom we can appoint to this duty over this, this ministry. And so we have here a principle that is, is very, very important and very, very significant. And uh, here I refer you to principle six. We looked at this in uh, 1 Timothy which reads, men and women who are appointed to serve as spiritual leaders in the church are to be selected based on a comprehensive biblical criteria for measuring Christian maturity. And if you go into the passage of Scripture in 1 Timothy 3 through 13, Titus 1, 5 through 9, you will see how very, very important it is to select people according to these qualities. And we don't have time to go through all of these, but let me just give you a little taste of what it looks, looks like. This saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to be an overseer, that's a spiritual leader. He desires a noble work, but an overseer therefore must be, what? Above reproach. That is a good reputation. Not perfect, but a good reputation. A man of one woman, moral purity, uh, self-controlled, sensible, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, I like that word better translated, not addicted to wine or anything, and so we could go on in this list. We don't have time, but it's, a, it's an incredible 
profile of maturity for those of us particularly who are in spiritual, uh, spiritual leaders in the church. And if you look at those passages carefully, you'll also see these aren't just qualities for a spiritual leader. There are qualities for every person who wants to become a mature Christian. This is what makes a good husband, a good father, a good mother, a good wife, a good employer, wherever we are and whatever we're called upon to do. And I have a reflection response question which simply says, what are some of the problems you've observed in local churches today because the spiritual leaders have not been selected based on the biblical profile of maturity outlined by Paul in his pastoral letters to Timothy and Titus? And one of the messages that I try to get across in pastoral conferences and in leadership conferences is that appointing people who are spiritually qualified is the most basic principle for good leadership. And that's what creates unity in a church. And let me just simply say, all it takes is one carnal, self-centered, insensitive individual in the leadership of the church to destroy the unity, not only among the leadership team, but in the whole church. I've seen it happen. One individual who's carnal and sinful. And that's why we need to take these qualities so seriously. And that's one of the things in my own ministry over the years I've learned to, that it, that is one of the most basic things. We learn that from Moses. We learn it from Jethro. We learn it from the apostles. We learn it from the apostle Paul. We learn it from the Bible. And it's so basic in terms of effective leadership. So the principle reads, to be effective leaders we must delegate responsibilities to other qualified people. 